So for this week's mystery, a lot of you wanted to know about Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur was one of the most famous rappers when I was growing up. In the 80s and 90s, Tupac was everything. It was Tupac, it was Biggie, it was Little Kim. I mean, to me, that was the 80s and 90s. That music is the music I still listen to. And that was, for me, the end all and be all of hip hop. Many of us old heads still feel that way and still listen to this music. Um, I Ain't Mad At You is one of my favorite songs by Tupac. So, why is this a mystery? Everybody knows that Tupac was gunned down and he's been dead for all this time. Well, it's a mystery because people are telling me that Tupac is not dead. And before you laugh and be like, what, wait, what? It, uh, it is kind of laughable, but then when you hear what the reason why, it does make you think. Somebody was saying to me, they have a lot of reasons, but one of their major reasons was because Tupac used to call himself Machiavelli. This was a nickname that he used, and I think he used it in one of his albums. Well, Machiavelli was a figure from history who faked his own death and reappeared 18 years later. So people are saying he was clearly aware of Machiavelli. He, Tupac was really intelligent. He read all kinds of like books and, you know, art of war and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. He was really smart. He wasn't just, you know, some run of the mill rapper. Um, not as if anything is wrong with being a run of the mill rapper, but he was not that. He was very intelligent. Um, I would say he was a poet really. And, um, he got into a lot of trouble. He was a very polarizing figure because for as brilliant as he was, he was also messy sometimes. Got into a lot of fights and beefs with people. Uh, some people said he would purposely make people mad. You know, he had this kind of strange, ambivalent kind of personality. More like a Jekyll and Hyde to me. Like one really sweet, poetic, you know, intelligent side. And then one side that was often shrouded by trouble. So... The question comes in, is Tupac really dead? Did he fake his own death? So today, I am going to pull cards and tell you. My name is Queen Oset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to other people who want to know about this mystery. If you want to get a reading done for yourself, please email me or hit me up on social media. All of my information is underneath this video. Likewise, if you want to join us on Patreon, that would be great. Um, that link is underneath this video, along with a bunch of other things that you might want to check out, uh, including my Ask an Aquarius merchandise. All right, guys, let's get right into it. So I'm asking the cards, is Tupac alive? And I'm going to tell you based on these cards, what the cards have to say. All right, good. All right, so the first card is the moon card. This is telling us about Pac himself. Remember I said his life was kind of strange? It was chaotic is what this card is calling it. The moon card has to do with chaos and there's also a light side of the moon and there's a dark side of the moon. Remember I mentioned that earlier? Pac had this light and he had this dark. So this card is actually co-signing what I just said. It's saying, yes, just like the moon, he had a darkness and he had a light. Um, there was a lot of chaos that went on. The moon indicates lunacy and chaos, too. And there was a lot of chaos that went on. People getting shot, fighting with Biggie. Maybe we're not certain. Maybe having slept with Biggie's wife. Uh, Pac said he did, but we don't know if he actually did or he just said that to fuck with Biggie because that's the kind of thing Pac would do, you know? Um, and that's what I mean by that light and that dark. In one breath, he was poetic and he knew what was going on in the world. He spoke against police brutality and consciousness and, you know, he wanted the masses of people. And he wasn't a person that disliked, you know, groups of people. He wanted people to come together. Very, very smart individual. Um... But at the same time, <laughs> he told Biggie that he smashed his wife. Biggie had a fit. Uh, he started fights. He got shot. I don't know how many times before he actually died. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, shot, he might have gotten shot on two different, three different occasions. I mean, this was nothing for him to go to a nightclub and get into an altercation. Um, he was accused of all kinds of things, which of which some was he actually did. And 
some are just you know things that people make up about you but the bottom line was was that he was that light and that dark that we see represented by the moon that is definitely pop now as far as is he still with us the cards are saying no this is the three of wands and it's reversed i'm gonna show it to you in upright so you can see what the card looks like but it came up in the reverse and the reason and that even looks like him from the back right i swear it looks like him from the back um but what they're telling us is that the three of wands is reversed when it's reversed that means he did not move on moving on three of wands is when you move forward in life you move on to do something so if he was still alive this card would be in the upright like it is now but we got it reversed that means he is no longer moving forward he is no longer with us so i know there are people who are never going to believe that Pac is dead and there are some people who are never going to believe that he's alive but for me, based on the cards that I'm showing you right now, he's not here. He's not on the planet with us. He's, in my opinion, he's in spirit based on these. This card right here says he's buried. This is dirt. This is, you know, somebody burying something. Uh, the Seven of Pentacles can mean a lot of things. All of these cards mean a lot of things. But when you take them together, it's like, okay, he had a chaotic life. Life that was light and dark. He's no longer with us. He is in the ground. It's a visual <laughs> takes you right through. Then for further, you know, clarification, I asked for two clarity cards. The Fool came up and the Wheel of Fortune. This is kind of interesting because the Fool indicates when somebody made some foolish decisions, which he did. He made some good decisions and he made some foolish ones. But this indicates when somebody makes foolish decisions. And it also indicates when something that is buried is going to come up so this is telling us that he's going to reincarnate even though he has you know been gone he's going to reincarnate this is about the a new beginning but is somebody that is like in gestation for example a baby so what this has given me is that he's going to be reborn now in my tradition we believe in reincarnation so this is telling me that Pac is going to be reborn maybe have already been reborn already depending upon the time frame and this card here um, reinforces that and the wheel of fortune is about um the turning of the wheel sometimes it can be good fortune especially in the upright so when we see this card for a person it's talking about coming back for their karma so he's back to clean up the karma he didn't have a chance to clean up before he died so this is what this is telling us and nine times out of ten whoever he comes back as is going to be some type of revolutionary our black power fist here change that's some type of revolutionary kind of like malcolm or martin or you know any of the millions of other revolutionaries we've seen throughout history so he's going to come back or is already back i think he's probably just stating based on this one so he's probably not born yet and going to come back and he's going to come back of course as a different person so we're not going to know that it's him but what you will see is similarities this person is going to be revolutionary like Pac. this person may even become famous like Pac, and people are probably going to compare this person to Pac. and that person is his reincarnation so i think that's really interesting i rarely i mean i've seen reincarnations before but that was very very interesting because i don't see them all the time and this is giving us a little bit more information about Pac. I asked more information about what happened. I'm always trying to dig deeper and get more info. And they said that he was the kind of person who didn't believe in doing things by the book, which is very true. He thought the book was tainted, which it is. And it's often not only uh, tainted, it's often unfair. So the book is the laws and, you know, the governing, you know, that we all go by, societal norms, that kind of stuff. Pac was totally against going by the book. He wanted revolution. He wanted change. So when we see this card, it indicates to us a person who does or doesn't go by the book. And the way it came up for us for Pac was somebody who doesn't. Somebody who wants change for the positive. Um, he wanted an end to police brutality. He wanted an end to some of the poverty and problems we see in different neighborhoods, especially the hood, but not just there. He wanted an end to the injustices. He wanted to see people, you know, in general do better. Um, he had a lot of conversation like that. If you listen to his music, you hear a lot of things like that. So he definitely believed in the revolution. His mother, from what I remember, was also, if I'm not mistaken, she was a Black Panther. 
Um, she went through her own trials and tribulations. I think she even had an addiction problem for a little while. But she taught him about revolution. She taught him about making change. And he really did pick up on that and talked about it a lot. So that was something he did truly believe in. They told me that this is going to be a never ending story. People are always going to believe one way or the other. No matter what I say, no matter what you say, no matter what nobody says, God himself, herself <laughs> could come to earth and say Tupac is with us. And there's still going to be people that's going to say, nah, -uh. it's always going to be somebody who believes one way or the other. And when I started this reading, I didn't. I didn't know if he was here or not. I had, I had, I was very open-minded, very unbiased about it. And based on these cards that I've seen, I'm like, yeah, he's gone. And so this card is saying it's going to be a never-ending story. We're never going to hear the end of this. And I'm fine with that. I mean, I don't care. You know, I put it out there for people to know. And if people choose to continue to believe he's alive, that's fine too. You know, there's always going to be somebody that looks like him. I saw somebody, um, they showed me some pictures actually. And it was pictures and the guy's teeth looked just like Pox. I mean, his teeth looked just like his. But the guy said he is not Tupac. He is like, no. <laughs> I know that's what people think, but he was like, no. So, like I said before, it's always going to go on. There's always going to be somebody online feeding it, you know, or, you know, encouraging the story. Our last one tells us a little bit more about Pac. This is interesting because I did not know this one. This is telling us that Pac had a very intuitive sense. Remember I called Pac a poet? Well, he definitely was a poet, but this one is saying that a lot of his, um, his deep knowing came from his intuition. It came from him um, listening to within. And it says that he had he was an empath, which I find to be very interesting because when you listen to his music, he is definitely preaching. I mean, definitely. Um, and he also believed in like, you know, opening up his consciousness and things like that. So and oh, another thing in this card says is that he was hypersensitive, which he was. He was very sensitive. But we were living in a time period during that time. I think a lot of people were very sensitive, sensitive to oppression, sensitive to just, you know, disrespect. I remember him talking a lot about respect. Um, so they're saying that he was also a very sensitive person. So he picked up on nuances. He picked up on what people didn't say. You know, he picked up on those little things. A lot of us do, um, but not everybody. <laughs> not everybody picks up on those things. So as you can see, he's a very interesting character because he's not 100% one thing. You can't say he's villain. You can't say he's hero. You can't say, you know, he's all these things simultaneously, depending upon who you ask about him. Now, this is our archetype cards. This is going to tell us the kind of person he was further. So this one is shadow. So it's reversed. And it's saying that he... Um, Yes, using power for self-aggrandizement. Uh, Pac, uh, Pac liked his power. He liked his influence. He liked the money. He liked, you know, the fun, the fame. Fame can be fun. Um, I'm From the songs, again, and from the interviews that he did, there was times when he didn't like it <laughs> based on, you know, the dramas and beefs that he would get into. But for the most part, he really did enjoy it. And it says that he used it a lot to feed his ego. And I think that's pretty normal when you're in that particular industry. Um, so that is something that we see about him that seems normal. Then they said he was a detective. This is funny to me because Aquarius are known for being natural detectives. But it came up in the light. So it's saying that he had great powers of observation and intuition. There we go again. Desire to seek out the truth. This is very true. He had great powers of observation and he had no problems telling you what he observed either. Um, he did want, a truth, want the truth, and he also wanted to spread the truth. If you take a look at him, look, listen to his music, watch his interviews. He was very fascinating. Um, and intuition. They told us earlier that he had a strong intuition because he was an empath. And we see again here him using his intuition to seek the truth. The last one here says that he uh, had a lot of loyalty, which I believe that's true. I don't know him personally, but from what was said about him, if he was loyal to you, he was loyal to you. You know, 
if that changed like it did with Biggie because at one point him and Biggie were loyal to each other or so we think and um, that changed but for anybody like for instance he was very close with Jada Pickett Smith um, and a bunch of other people you know and, and after he passed away people talked about how loyal he was and then they said he's romantic women loved Pac loved Pac everywhere he went when he did an interview and there was women around they were like all over him and he had a pretty smile he was fun you know he's a fun guy so um just from you know again knowing him from television um they said he was romantic and chivalrous and he had a love of honor and there is a code of the streets and a lot of men during that time period did have honor in that way. They had a code of the streets. It was a loyalty. You stayed loyal to those who were in your family and those who were in your circle. Nowadays, I don't see this as much. Um, it might still go on. I hope it does still go on, but I don't see it as much. And during his time period, this was very important. It was like they called it the code of the streets, you know, and you stuck to that code. You didn't snitch on your brothers. You looked out for each other. It was a big thing. And if somebody was known for doing the opposite of that, that would be somebody who people called a clown, you know, or somebody that people didn't trust. And he was not like that. He was definitely loyal. Women loved him, romantic, chivalrous, and had that love of honor. So we see a lot of his attributes here. And again, like I said, we see somebody who isn't perfect, but we see, you know, somebody who's multifaceted. And then I got us some of these. That one came out reversed. This one came out in the upright and this one came up reversed. So the first one here is the strategist. Remember I told you guys he called himself Machiavelli. Well, he was into stuff like that. He was into strategies. He was into, let me show you this in the upright. It came up in the reverse, but let me show you the picture. He was into that kind of thing. He was very strategic. He liked to read a lot. Um, he was incarcerated many times. And when he was incarcerated, they, they said that's what he did. He read. He tried to improve his knowledge. He tried to gain more knowledge. So remember we talked about Machiavelli. Somewhere nine times out of ten when he was in prison, he probably was reading these types of books, Machiavelli, things like that. And what we're getting from here was, yeah, he knew that information, but not well enough to fake his own death. That's what they're saying here. Yeah, he knew about strategies. Yeah, okay, he was cool with Machiavelli. Yeah, you know, he knew a lot of stuff, but he did not have enough of whatever it takes to fake his own death. I can't even imagine what you need to fake your own death. I guess you would need sources, contacts, people who are willing to hide you, maybe a plastic surgeon. I don't know. But they're saying that whatever that was, he did not have it. So he did not do that. He knew about it, but he wasn't able to pull it off. And he might have. No one popped that. Might have been an idea that he had for later on. Um, but it did not come to pass. Then this one here says that he was a speaker. He definitely was. a. am going to call him a prophet because if you listen to the stuff that he had to say, he was really putting it out there. So he was that speaker. He was that person that would get out there and talk. He didn't do it the same way, you know, like Barack Obama, because this picture reminds me of Barack, I swear. But he didn't do it the same way like a politician would. He did it from his music, from his poetry, from um, the interviews. He did interviews all the time and people would be accusing him. I remember listening to this one. He was on a talk show and this woman was accusing him of causing violence in his community. And he's like, community's already violent, sis. <laughs> like, like the community at that point that he was in was already violent. And what he was doing was the opposite. He was trying to talk about the oppression that was going on in the community. And the person he was talking to didn't know nothing about the community, first of all, and was just talking out her ass. And he was, you know, really schooling her. He was schooling her and me and the whole audience. Um, so he definitely was a very powerful speaker. And a lot of that power came out in his lyrics. And this one right here, this is our returning home card. This is reversed. So this is telling us he's not coming back, people. He's gone. Uh, he's gone to a different home now. He's gone to the home in the sky. He's not coming back to us to a physical home because this picture here, as you can see, is a physical home. So he's not coming back to us. And it's a man you're walking to. He has gone to the other side. 
And last, I asked Pac to give us a message. And this is what he told us. I found this to be fascinating because of who he was. And the first card says, be wise about who you allow in your space. There's a lot of speculation that Pac was murdered by people he knew. Some people say it was Suge Knight. Some people say it was other people that he knew. Some people say it was Biggie's crew, you know, or people that Biggie knew, you know. Um, nobody really knows. I think somebody, I don't even know if anybody was arrested for it. They might have been. But we all know in these types of crimes, you really don't know who did what. Like I said before, a lot of people don't snitch. So you don't know who did what. Unless somebody has, uh, you know, evidence without a shadow of a doubt, these crimes have a tendency to either go unsolved or somebody gets arrested for it and they're not sure if they did it. I don't know. But when he said be wise about who you allow in your space, I was like, based on the things that happened to him in his life. Remember, I said he was loyal, but he was betrayed on several different occasions. So I'm like, OK, I get it. So that's why he would say something like that, regardless of who shot him, because I'm often wondering, was it something to do with Suge? Um but regardless of that, he had other things that happened to him. Other people, him and Biggie fell out over disloyalty, you know. So he's basically letting us know, be careful who you allow in your space because some of the times it can turn deadly um, or it could just be a major betrayal. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine and she was telling me that her best friend was sleeping with her husband, her best friend. I mean, I mean, best friends had been friends since they were five, six years old ran the streets together um you know the whole fucking nine and she got married her best friend got married they were you know and they're now they're in their 30s and she found out about six months ago that the baby that she had her best friend had belongs to her husband and i was like what so you got to be really careful like he said who you allow in your space he also told us to ground yourself like to, to get grounded, you know, to come, you know, to get, you know, a lot of people ground themselves in different ways. I use grounding meditations and what grounding does is bring you back to your body, back to center. Um, people often do this in meditation, but it keeps you focused on your, your life. It keeps you focused on the big, you know, the big things, the priorities, your goals, your values. So he told us to ground yourself and, you know, ground yourself and focus on those things. Then he said here something I find to be very interesting right here because of how many times he was arrested, the guy behind bars. And um, a lot of people said he was a cannabis user. I'm not certain because, you know, I never smoked with him, but <laughs> but that's what I heard. And what I found to be interesting about it is he said life isn't fair, but you can choose to be fair. And he's right. Life is not fair. There's often oppression. There's often injustice. Like I said earlier, you know, he would have been very, he was very outspoken about that and very aware about that. So what it says here is like, no, nah, life isn't fair, but you can choose to be fair. You can treat people fairly. You can um, treat yourself fairly. You know, you can be loyal to those who you care about. Those are things you do have control over. You might not have control over what happens in the government. You might not have control over what happens in the weather. You know, you might not have control over those things, but you do have control over what happens in your own heart, in your own life, in your own home. You completely control the thoughts that are in your mind. So what he's saying here is choose to be fair. Choose to treat people in a fair manner. So that was our last card. So according to this, our boy is gone and he has given us some good advice. So... Like I said before, this is a never-ending story. <laughs> I'm not expecting it to ever end. I'm cool with that. But this is the answer that I got. Okay? So I'm going to put it up for our next vote. And we're going to decide on what our next mystery is. You please come back soon because I have a lot more to say. See you later.